Yes, good morning, everybody. Hooray. Good morning, Emily Miller. Kate Richmond. How are good you? Morning. I'm well. Good morning. Thank you. And hello, everybody out there in good Facebook morning. land. It's great to see you all. Thanks so much for joining us. If it's Wednesday, it must mean Facebook Live from Beadshop.com. Yes, from Beadshop.com. We're very excited to have you here. Let me take a drink of my mystery beverage in my cup. You never know what I'm drinking. <laughs> Could be gin. <laughs> Could be. Could be coffee. Could be water. You never know. Um, so we're, as always, very, very glad to have you here with us. And uh, just to let you guys know, if you're watching this later after our live broadcast and you want to get right to the instruction, all you need to do is fast forward about 15 minutes or so and you'll see that instruction come up. The other thing I wanted to mention, you can always watch our Facebook Lives three different ways after the broadcast. You can watch them right here on our Facebook channel, right under the videos tab, which if you're watching on your computer and I'm pointing, maybe is this way, I don't know. It could be that way <laughs> to too, left, I, I don't know. But you'll find it there and you'll find all of our broadcasts archived that way. You can also hop over to our YouTube channel. I know a lot of you watch on our YouTube channel uh, beadshop.com, all spelled out. And of course, you can find us always on our Facebook Live page on our website, beadshop.com. And that Facebook Live page not only has the video, but it also has a list of all the ingredients. And uh, if you're watching this, this is going to get confusing. The Monday after the Wednesday broadcast, on that Monday, uh, usually by noon Pacific time, we post our episode notes for the episode, so you can download those and follow JP along. jumps on that yeah, right Yeah, Janice away. does a great job with those episode notes, so they're a great thing for your archive. So those are all ways that you can find us later on. Um, also, I'll put a little plug in for two other things. You want to make sure and go to beadshop.com, sign up for our newsletter, because it's a great way for us to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. And I know that many of you watching have joined our new Facebook group. I really like right, that new Emily? Facebook group. It's giving... It's really a nice way to communicate it's and a answer community. little questions yeah. and give you a plug and a shot in the arm when you did something and you we succeeded really at Peyote Stitch. I'm looking at you. Yes, I'm looking at you, Lynn, and I don't <laughs> and know, so many others. And, yes. Oh my gosh. It, yeah, it's it's great. really great to see yeah. everybody kind of coming through. And if you have, let me just say, if you've gone over and you've added yourself to the group but I haven't approved you yet, it means that you haven't answered our three simple kind of Mm, I don't know. Introductory. introductory questions. So I've sent people little reminders about that. But if you haven't or you can't find them or whatever, just shoot me um, a message via Facebook um, and I can go in there and add you. But we want to keep like spammers and stuff out. So we have that little bit of a hoop that you have to jump through yeah. to join but in. But you group. know, I think this is kind of keeps us as, as a as a kind of a closer knit community. And, yeah. and the goal is to be able to interact with one another like we are now. I yeah. mean, you and I are in the same room, yeah. but there are hundreds of people out there across the country, right. across the world. In their own little bead room. In their own little bead room, That's sitting right. at their own bead tables. Right, right. So we're trying to <laughs> or make their this laps world... Or whatever. Yeah, we're making this world smaller one bead at a time, <laughs> right? So we'd love to have you over there. It's called the beadshop.com community, the bead table. And if you just put it in the search box there in the Facebook page, um, you'll see it. And it'll say when you join... Those questions will come up. You can just write some really brief answers. Mm -hmm. I don't need yeah, they're uh, simple. a tome. Right. You know, you right. don't need And then to you write can get thing. in and start sharing. Yeah, and start sharing. Yeah. You guys, the work is so, you have really outdone yourselves. It's really, really great. So we're really totally inspired by it. We've gotten some ideas for <laughs> upcoming Facebook, and stuff like that. It's really nice. It's a, it's a, it's a great way to hear about feedback, too. Yeah, um, I know not we only had, from us. We had some questions. But from your peers. I want to jump in on one question first. Sure. I, this is a question that I've also had problems with sure. for years. And there was a bit of talk about this. We um, did. We had a big talk about <laughs> glue. <laughs> about glue. And, and in particularly the hypo tube. You know what? I really like hypo tube cement. Hypo cement, yeah. Because of the applicator. It's mm -hmm. so fine and only a little comes out at a bit a time. Right. Unless you have it doesn't. broken the tube. <laughs> right. And the tubes are apparently extra thin. Um, so my best recommendation is... I'm getting a is, Kleenex ready for... I is, don't know what you're No, no, I'm not going to do anything. My best recommendation is instead of rolling from the bottom, uh -huh. just squeeze as you go oh. like this. 
right? Instead of trying to put too much rolling, pressure on it. Rolling, because the rolling might It stresses rip. it, yeah. Right, it's so smart. And I then the other thing is, um, I actually kind of keep them, at home I have a little Dixie cup, it's super right. unattractive, but here at Beach Shop we have a prettier a container. A pretty little cup, yes. Right? Keep your, your glue upright, and yeah, this allows sense. gravity to help you out. Right, to do its thing. It means it comes out a little slower, which mm -hmm. is kind of a good thing, because this glue tends to be kind of out right. there right away. And as we go along later, I will show you my trick to getting the needle back into mm -hmm. the cap. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also do like to clean that off when I'm done. There's, there it is. There it is. Wipe, there, thank goodness. Wipe, there we wipe, go. Thank you. And then put <laughs> oh, God. Uh, strings. Then oh, put God. the needle back in. Nicely done. And then stand it up like that in, right. the, in the jar. And that mm -hmm. tends to help have gravity, kind of help keep it keep away it from the should. top yeah. so it doesn't leak out. And there were some other really good tips in there. Um, I know that someone oh, yeah. said that they put a little petroleum jelly or Vaseline around yeah, the tip. that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. And also um, one from way back in the day. Is that what Gita Brit that said? No, well, Brittany. Oh. What she would do is she would get one of those super dense makeup sponges, the right? little triangular kind Yeah, style. a little triangular kind. And as you're working with it, you just put that tip back into mm -hmm. that makeup yeah, sponge. And skip this cap And completely. skip the cap. And then when you're done completely, you can come in, wipe it off, and get that cap in there. And but I saw somebody's glue on Facebook the other day, and it had this big piece of tape all wrapped around it. Yeah. I thought, I've been there. Yeah, we've all I know been that. there. Yeah. I've been gluing away, and then fit, my fingers are feeling cold, and I look down, and it's running out my hand. Well, and you know what I did this just morning? Just a mess. I forgot to put the lid back on as I was gluing some stuff, <laughs> and I smelled glue. I'm all, what's that smell? And then I looked over, and there was like, like a, a puddle. big puddle of glue. <laughs> Thankfully, I was putting it on the plastic, but still. Well, still, I mean, it's 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 not cheap, particularly. No. You know, it's expensive, and, and one that would like to at least get, you know, I don't know, this is like a quarter of a gram or something. Yeah. It's not very much glue. Right. We'd like to at least get, you know, part of our money's right. worth out of it. So. so it's a great little tip. And you guys have really been super helpful over at the Bean Table yeah. um, Facebook community group. So, and the other thing that I really love, we had a little roll call the other day of where everyone was from. And it's really cool to see how everybody comes to this from all over the world. And we know a lot of you watch this late night, you know, along with us, you know, you're on the other side of the globe, on the opposite hemisphere. So it's really exciting. I'm looking at you, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's cool. We've got everybody coming in from all over. So we're trying to do our best, as I say, making this world a smaller, friendlier, more creative place one beat at a time. So uh, we're really, really grateful for you. And we also are grateful when you share this video out. Um, it's amazing. And when you hit mm -hmm. the like button, when you give us thumbs up or hearts or happy faces or whatever, it really makes us know that we're doing the right thing or that you like the shot. Brandon works really hard behind the scenes on the camera um, to get uh, all these shots. So we really, really love your feedback that way as well. So those thumbs up, thumbs ups, and hearts, we love it. There go a bunch. And right look, there the they street. go. There so they go. thank you. We love that thank part. Thank you. We love that. Yeah. All right. So questions? How are we doing? Uh, let's um, see. Someone was noticing my amazing new, new bracelet. bracelet. Yes, yep, thank you, yep. Mimi Hill. Yep. This was one I put together thank and you, shared Gita, for that on the Facebook link. group. Got thank it, you got for it. that. Lots um, of highs and hellos. Oh, and someone likes my scarf, my this. Kimberly. Kimberly, yeah. thank you. Yeah. One of my, you know, when I was a little girl, and I still do it now, my gran and I would go to, like, yard sales or tag sales or, you know, she always loved collecting jewelry and um, costume jewelry in particular. So I have a huge, huge... And I've Emily, helped a little bit. You have helped me <laughs> with some of Emily's pieces uh, that were your mom's yeah. and stuff that yeah. find their way. So I have boxes and boxes of all my brooches um, that when I'm having a bad day, I go in and I look at my brooches and I go, oh, I remember that one. I remember that one. But this was one of my grandmother's favorites. She used to wear this. She had like a purple blouse and she would wear it kind of right oh, here. Nice so one. I still, the sunflower is, makes me happy. Mm -hmm. So that was my little grand. So we got lots of highs and hellos yes. um, all over. Uh, and folks that I think are here for the first time, which oh, is kind of welcome, exciting. Welcome, Hi, Tammy welcome. from Alabama. Yes, it's awesome. Um, we got Claudette's here, Ginger's here, both Ginger's are both here. Both Ginger's, Ginger 1 and 2, right, or right. 2 and 1. Yeah, or, I don't know how yes, it works it's out. it's awesome. Debbie it's McKee, great. hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's great. Tara, it's great Terry Lidge from South Carolina. South, uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Checking in. Um, so that's great. really nice. You know? Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yep. 
Yep. Gita Larson says sponge. Sponge. <laughs> yes. The sponge trick is a really, really good one. It was a great one from um, from uh, Brittany that she did. Anything else, Brand, that you see? And I know Janice is on there, too. Mimi was wondering if you actually had a jewelry room. You know, Mimi, I actually... Um, I'm working on it. Well, I, <laughs> I do have a jewelry armoire, but you can ask my husband, does my jewelry stay in that armoire? No. <laughs> is it all over the house? Yes, it is. My husband says that I've, I've leaked beads places, because yes. they'll be everywhere I've settled, there'll be a little a pile little of pile jewelry of beads. on the yeah. dining room table, yeah. by the sofa, so you know, funny. in the bathroom, there's a little dish with a bunch dish, of things hanging yeah. out of it. Well, I have so. a bunch of I have a bunch of boxes and stuff different ways, but um, you know, like my grandmother, Gran always used to keep um, my granddad's. I'll make this short because we're almost ready to go. But my granddad on special occasions would bring my gran a box of C's candy, mm -hmm. and if you know here on the West Coast, C's candy is our candy. Mm -hmm. So Gran would always save those C's candy boxes, and so we had a lid and the bottom of the box. And she would always, she laid out the jewelry mm -hmm. in those seized candy boxes, and those would be in her like dresser drawers or whatever. So yes, I like I like a stack of boxes, <laughs> and My I do like still a, seized candy. She had a little round um, zipper jewelry case that was oh. shaped like a shell. Oh, I have it. I'll show it to oh, you someday. I'd love to see and it's it. got little tiny pockets inside, and then she would pin things inside the lid. And I just, I remember as a kid kind of going through that and asking her the stories of all the different like, things. Like, what's this one? What's yeah, what's this, this one? one? Where's yeah. this one come yeah. from? You know? Well, and we'd love to see. I don't know if you guys have treasure boxes or yeah. something. I don't know. From your, We'd love to see those, too. I'll have to. Oh, I can, I can photograph. I can photograph my would dresser you? top, which I is would completely love that. covered with jewelry. I bet people would love to see that. Yeah. I will photograph. I still have a, a couple of little <laughs> grand's little boxes <laughs> of things that she's I'll bring in. I'll bring in my little one. We should show them. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. So we'd love to see yours, too. Send them in or Post them on the Facebook page. We'd love to see them. But it smells like C's. Lynn, you're right. I'm yeah. sure. Every time you open that box, right? a little chocolate. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. A little bit of C's candy, for yep. sure. Anything else, Bran? You've well, got? I will try to remember uh, to call Kim Kim instead of her full name so that she doesn't feel like she's back in school. Oh, <laughs> right. Well, I do have this habit of calling everyone by their first and last name, too, as well. So, right, Emily Miller? Kate Richburg, you're right. That's right. All right. Well, you guys, let's get down to it. We have such a, a fun project for you um, today. And when we were working on uh, figuring out what our projects were going to be for November, uh, just close to the holidays, I was thinking about kind of these two kind of twins projects or kind of cousins. I don't know what you'd want to call them, but they look great Relatives on their own. That you get Relatives that only at the holidays. Only at the holidays. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, last week's one. Last week's. So pretty. That was the beaded stacks mm -hmm. was last week. And you can see this guy, these guys here. We did the peyote stitch bead. And I will tell you, Janice, I know you're watching. Your episode notes on clarifying all of that peyote stitch. It's, it's like you good. had been peyote stitching for years instead of yeah. not since 1990. So great job and really great work on clarifying what we did here on Facebook with them. You know, if you did this type of bead uh, last time, either with our colors or your own colors, do a flip-flop of the colors, too, because I think oh, that's a yeah. really interesting way to kind of see what happens when you just change the, change the proportion, around. like one's yeah. greater than the other now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, think I think that's it's a, cool a way, way. To, cool way to play with color kind of directly. And that's kind of what we did with the project this week. So this, these are the stacks that go, let me put on my glasses so I can see you guys and, oh, and look at what I'm doing. So this one was the uh, Golden Hour project. Mm -hmm. Um, from last week. And then here are the laddered stacks from this week, to go golden with. hour, to go with. And that's, Emily, we did just what you said here mm -hmm. was to um, reverse what we've got. So, Bran, I don't know if we want to just jump in and yeah, start it. moving that camera okay, down. I zoomed right in on that, but oh, I okay. can go ahead and move. Sure. Why don't, we, why don't we get the movement going oh, okay. and then we'll, uh, we'll continue from there. <sighs> I'll stay here. I'll stay frozen in time. Okay. Don't move. Right. Kate Richburg. And someone asked, Emily, your email is emily at beadshop.com. Correct. I will respond there as well. We're all at beadshop. Kate at beadshop, Emily at beadshop, Janice mm -hmm. at beadshop. That's how you can find oh, all Gita of Oh, Gita did it already for me. Oh, Thank you, Gita. Oh, bless you. You're the best. So you can see here on this laddered stack, we've just reversed the colorway. So we've got the shadows on the outside 
shadows on the inside. And it's a great little stack project. I think these are great to wear all three together, or you can just uh, make them individually, whatever works for you. Um, but I'm kind of wild about it. And then for this week, well, for last week, we, you know, when you're making gifts, the stretch, um, oh, it's, it's it's so easy, it's right? It's a no-brainer. Easy to do. You know, yeah. it's, it's because it'll fit everyone. It's sort of the checks mix, you know. If you need right. to make something quick for everybody that everyone's going to like. Right. Um, or seize candy, mm -hmm. really. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Nuts and shoes. Right. Uh, one box. Right. You're good. You're yeah. good to go. So this will fit almost everybody on mm -hmm. your list. Then on this guy, this is the laddered stack. Usually when we do a stack bracelet, and we have some over there, Emily, that I, I want to pull in. grab a couple in. with them. Yeah. Some, some this different is a really sizes. pretty button yeah. on it. Usually with our stacks, we have them wrap around, and we do a closure that has a button, which I love. I love this button closure. Mm -hmm. It Me looks too. great. But I also have, I also thought, well, why not try and make them adjustable? You know, it's it's really hard to do something that's one size fits all. Mm -hmm. um, but the adjustable nature of of this sort of sliding clasp or fishing clasp, mm -hmm. hook, fishtail fishtail clasp, clasp mm -hmm. is it just it does make it pretty much goof proof. You know, yeah. you don't have to think about it too much more than that. No, and you can make them for just about anybody. Yeah. Yep. Jan Janice would like to see the funky knot on the stretch bracelet again. The funky knot on the stretch bracelet. The stretch. To the, what's that funky knot showing? The surgeon, the, the surgeon. Oh, snot? I think what Janice is seeing was this little bit of elastic that escaped. Back in there, is that what you're asking, Janice? I think so. I don't know. Janice, well, let's. Thanks, thanks for pointing it out. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> let's. Um, there we go. So, um, I don't remember where I was. Where oh. was I? Where was I? Well, we were talking about this being uh, being adjustable. So that's what we're going to show today is not only could you put a button on the end of this, but you could make this, like you said, Emily, one size fits all yep. uh, with, this, um, with this adjustable knot. So let's, where I want to jump in next is... I want to mention what we're using for the project. And then we also had a question, you guys, on our Facebook page about connecting this whole contraption, ladder bracelets, mm -hmm. to the different boards. So we're going to do that as well. But let me run through the quick um, materials that you're going to need through this, and then, then we'll jump to that next one. So I do have some different ladder bracelets in front of me, and I wanted to show... What we're using for this ladder bracelet today is we're going to use the uh, one millimeter, um, one millimeter Indian leather. I think is what we're using here. Yep, that's okay? correct. And the one millimeter is I like it because it's nice. It's slim, but it also it's probably the least hardy of these leathers just because it's thinner, right. right? So you need to be a little bit careful as you're doing the laddering and stuff that you don't nick the leather and stuff like that. And we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. But this is the uh, one millimeter. Then I just wanted to show you some samples of how the different leathers would look. This is the 1.5 millimeter. And you can see here at the end the difference in size, the size contrast. We've got this one here, that 1.5, and the 1. And then this is the 2 millimeter, so it's a little chunky. So my advice when you are choosing your cord for the laddering, when you're choosing your leather, you can see how this smaller bead with the 1.5 looks. And then with the slightly larger or slightly chunkier beads, the 2.0, and then you'd kind of jump up to a heavier cord as well. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of choices that come into play. But you can see it's really just the scale. It really changes the scale of the bracelet, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I do like that Indian leather and that, um, I especially like the distressed colors. Because mm -hmm. they're, I do too. they're not, it doesn't look like the finish is going to change very much. Mm -hmm. Maybe darken a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I do like that, um, um, mottled appearance. Yeah, of it. Yeah, that sort kind of, of natural that distressed, almost. Yeah, yeah, that kind of yeah. tattered 
feeling a little tattered. Too, a little tattered. Yep. So let's look at Brandon, and I think I want you to kind of um, pan out a little, and maybe we could actually, um, maybe we want to put the camera back actually, because I'm going to be holding up the board. So we need kind of a big, okay. a big view. So I hate to ask you to move that back one more time, but let's move the camera back so we can see, um, see some big front views here. And just I'm a, going to get just a, a quick shout out to Terry Lynch. I understand you're vegan. We do have, um, oh yeah, uh, wax cotton and, um, that we could use for this as yeah, well. Yeah, and the, cotton, the cord. cotton cord would mm -hmm. actually work really, really well. Give me a well minute, I'll get that. that link for you. Yeah. Um, and you could certainly use it absolutely in place of the leather. And in fact, the cotton cord would be a bit more durable, I think, if it was going to go through any kind of getting wet on the regular Yeah, and it also would have a, maybe a little bit of a different feel to the piece, but our cotton cords are pretty cool. I think right. he would like those. Oh, Janice got them. Oh, Janice, you're so quick. You're so quick. So before I go through some of the rest of the materials that we're using, there was a question on um, in the Facebook group about connecting your projects to the board. And I, I want to share some ideas with you. There's lots of different ways to do it. And, you know, Janice does it one way. You like it one way. I like it one way. You guys were talking in the group about how you liked it. So let me jump in with this board that I've got here. Now, this was a sample from when Janice and I were at filming Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels a few weeks ago. We were doing, we were breaking down our big color study project, and this is actually a project that we have coming up for you actually a little later, um, my color study that I was working on. But I wanted to break them down into single strands, so you didn't have to have the color study that wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. You could have the color study as just individual bracelets. So another stacking idea. Another stacking idea. Yeah. And the way that Janice did this was she set this up. She goes, Kate, I'm going to set it up on rubber bands for you on the board. And I went, that's amazing. What a great idea. So this is what she did. And I'm going to take this one off. Emily, would you hold the board kind of up for me so everybody can see yeah. it? Can everybody see this okay, Bran? You guys can see it? I zoomed it right in Zoom onto right the board. In. Okay. okay. So I've got just this short piece, and this is kind of like what we're going to be doing today. But just real quickly to show you, here's the button connected, and I tied a little knot here at the end, and inside that knot is the thread that I'm going to be laddering with mm -hmm. or doing infinity stitch with later. But what Janice did was she tied a knot at the end, because I knew this was just going to be a single wrap, so I didn't need it to be very long. This now is, I don't know, maybe about 11 or 12 inches, maybe it's about a foot, so we cut about two feet earlier. But she, we tied a knot here at the end, just an overhand, and then we used our rubber band, and we just went through that rubber band, right, a little closure, and then I've got this, I bring this all the way around, and look what's popping up from the back, our friend the rubber band. And I'm just going to get working backwards. I can't really see it, but there we go. Whoops, I put it in the wrong way. I'll get my hands out of the way in just a second, you guys. Whoops. As I work backwards on this. There we go. So see how that just pops around? And everything is pretty tight. And if you turn it around to the back, you can see all of these are set up just like that. Okay, it's a really ingenious yeah, little solution. Yeah, and the rubber band kind of gives you kind of like a, a self-tensioning mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so, let's say that you were traveling, you were going to do a whole bunch of these bracelets, and you're going to take them on the road when you're going for Thanksgiving, or maybe mm -hmm. you want to be on the plane or whatever. This is a good way to have everything pre-set up this way. And then you can just come along and ladder and do whatever it is you're going to do. And it all stays on this board nicely. So that was a great, a really great tip. I loved it. Um, so thank you, Janice. That was, it was a good teamwork there when we were in Cleveland. You know, it was and, awesome. And this, these are the tips that we come up with a lot of times are kind of just necessity born. Yeah. You know, you're necessity in an, is the mother of invention. You're in a, an unfamiliar place. You don't have all of your supplies. And... You say, how can I make this work? Right. You know? Right. That happens to me more often than not. Yeah. 
right? Oh my gosh, I want to bead. N O T or K N O? Can oh, right? <laughs> Cannot. Um, so let me show you another question we had was, well, what if you're doing a long, long bracelet, and as you're wrapping it around the board, you don't want your beads to get damaged. But how do you deal with when you're coming down the home stretch? You've got all of this stuff beaded over here. What the heck do you do? Right. 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 So this oh, is just the this color. One? Isn't oh, this? It's this pretty one. nice, right? Yeah. It's the color study. I love it's this. It's my color study. Thing yeah, it's a little mm. little preview of that. Oh, I like it. I'm gonna have to take a little longer look Thanks, at that. Sunway Miller. Um, so what I do, again, I do this with the rubber band trick, or you could do this with twine. But I've got our little clampers. See, I've got the clampers up here and the clamper down here on the board. And I'm just going to use my rubber band. And the rubber band isn't going to harm my beads at all. Then I can just put it around that clamp. Then this can just kind of fall off to the side. And as I'm working, I actually want to make this a little bit. Joanne Shorter. Nash says that she likes to use hair band, the elastic hair oh, band, elastic which are a little hair softer. Are great. Yeah, would be even, even softer, softer, even much. I don't have any more now that I've cut my hair. I'm out of hair bands. Um, but you can see here, we'll go around, we'll come around, we'll come around, and then I actually need. I Somebody cut this was one. just asking for this two rubber band method, so here it comes. Yeah, and where I know I have a rubber, another rubber band here somewhere. There they are in this pile. I'll come in. And I'll put this around. I got the board. You got the board. Mm -hmm. You got me, Em. I got you. And then see that? Bam. Then you can kind of adjust wherever this is holding. Whoops, this mm -hmm. is an old rubber band. Let me get a new rubber band. A yeah, hair so band. Yeah, band would be yeah, a little more Yeah, Joanne, durable. really great, um, really Good great thought. thought. Yep. Then here is where I'm working. And again, I can... That hairband also might have a little more um, grab. Maybe. Or a little less grab, too. A little too. less grab, but yeah. I can... Could um, be either way. So you can see, mm. I've got this ready to go, and I can ladder from here. Mm -hmm. And then if I did want to kind of keep this out of the way, I could wind this around a little bit here, and mm -hmm. I can kind of tuck it across or right. whatever, however you wanted to do it. But this is kind of that two rubber band method. Now you could, if you didn't want to do the rubber bands, you could also do one end um, with of the, the, with the twine. twine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The kitchen twine would work, especially for this end here, I think, mm -hmm. which I've done a lot, and then have the rubber band be on this end. Then I have one more to show you guys, one more, which um, I use a lot. Uh, and then we're going to also show you what Emily does over here, which I like as well. But you can also use, whoops, I've had a bead spill. I've had uh -oh, a bead spill. Uh-oh, row. That's okay. Let me just, there's no use crying over spilled seed beads. We're just going to, you know, we'll throw a couple over the shoulder. There and we move go. On. And move on. That's good luck. That's right. You can also use the macrame board. Right. And Janice and I, early on, we did a kind of macrame board versus project tray kind of deal, which I still dig this macrame I know, board. I know. I'm a traditionalist, and I go back to my velvet board every time. Right. Yep. What, what I liked about this is, and let me show you guys. I'll kind of unwind it. This was kind of my practice piece. I was warming up. And so what I did, a lot of times when I design ladder bracelets, and I don't know if you find this, M, but when you're designing I just kind of start yeah I don't absolutely I sometimes don't even palette my beads I palette like a section yep. and then I just use the whole well, I want to say the whole nine yards <laughs> but the whole four <laughs> yards right and because you can whatever you cut off will be okay yeah we can else. still use mm -hmm. but I like a lot of options that's why I have coffee Tea, water, gin. Are you I have multiple it all beverage right here. Person? I am. I like multiple yeah, beverages. Is. I do. I do. <laughs> What's that? Bailey's. Bailey's, Bailey's. right? <laughs> um, B and B. But you can see here, what I did to start, I used the twine instead of the rubber band, and I just made a little loop. And see how I put my little button in that loop, and now I'm just going to come up to that macrame board slide that sucker in mm -hmm. and, and it's nice and away you go and here it looks right. what it looks like on the back the other thing that i also like is it gives me a visual clue 
because here are inches marked on this side. That is pretty handy. It tells me, like it right here, I've done about four inches of bracelet. So it kind of gives me a light at the end of the tunnel, right? So I know, oh, I'm going to keep going and maybe, you know, I'm going to have to take this off the board to check it anyway, but maybe I'll check it when I get to about here at about six inches, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives me a good visual clue. Then all of this excess, I can just slide around and see these little, um, the little notches. Yeah, and the little notches. Yep. Store I can a just, lot of stuff for yeah. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's ready to go. So also really good if you're beating on the plane or in the car. You know, I I like crafting in the car. Um, right? You're a, you're a car crafter. I am, when, for sure. When your husband drives, yep. right? I, I'm the same way. I like, especially on the plane, when I'm on mm. the plane, you know, I like a little plane project for sure. There we go. So it's not so disrupted. Put my headphones in so no one will talk to me. Right? Right. I'm that way too. <laughs> I'm like... There may not be anything playing, but my headphones but, are in. Yeah, right. It's a good tip. It's a very good tip. Um, so then I'm ready. And you could also open up the little... Um, section that you're going to be beading by putting one of the legs of leather in one little scallop and one in the other and that kind of gives you a good mm -hmm. open um, kind of area for beading. So this works pretty well. Yeah. I really like this. You know, I'm, I, I do like the macrame boards. You can pin into them as well you can. using T-pins. And it comes or... a little bigger too. Yep. Here's the big one. Yep. It's just big and little. Yep. But I like this size. Mm -hmm. But I like the big one too. I like the I like the velvet board. I'm 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 gonna stick with so my situation. So talk about the way that you like to set yours up, Em, because that's a perfect segue um, into uh, setting up. And then after we do that, I'll talk a little bit about the tools and materials. So I brought Janice use. her first set of clamps, mini clamps. You did. You've <laughs> given us so much, including clamps. And I really like these. They kind of you can do a bunch of things with them. They can mm -hmm. act. With soft flex, you can put them at either end, mm -hmm. you know, to hold things so that beads don't escape. But I like my velvet board, just your garden variety. Yeah, our velvet, our velvet pad. Velvet pad, mm -hmm. whatever you call these. And I like this because it, it allows me to sit more upright. And oh. I tend to bead... As some, I'm slouching down like I this. tend to bead sometimes for some there multiple hours. I'm sitting up. Right. So now I, I have a, a piece that we started off, right, a mm -hmm. little sample, and I cut a piece about as long um, as twice the tray mm -hmm. plus about a foot. Mm -hmm. So that would be a bracelet length. Mm -hmm. So it's a little longer than you might normally might use. Might normally need. Right? And we actually call this the insert, the project oh, sorry. tray insert. And, the, and the insert. Okay. Mm -hmm. I fold it over at the top. And I don't worry. I don't, have no fear about doing this. No fear. No fear. Fold it over at the top. Slip the clamp on. Mm -hmm. so, so there's the like front. That. Check the back. Mm -hmm. So it holds it pretty snugly. Oh, and if you that. had a little bit of fear, you could put, I don't know, a little piece of leather or a little sure. piece of ultra suede or yeah. whatever. No, if you I have, have no fear. fear. I don't have any problem. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem with this technique. Bring it right around to the bottom. Clamp it again. And then I like to sit at the table with this upright in front of me. So it's a little bit different um, oh, yeah. um, little ergonomics, bit, right, but it allows me to sit up you. a little more and not have my head hanging down. Right. You know that new millennial problem of, what are they calling it? Um, texting know. neck. Oh. Where everyone walks around looking at their phones. Right. Uh, same thing kind of applies here. Yeah, I beating wanna, neck. Beating neck. I want to sit up right as much as I can. And when I'm in the car, I actually rest this against the dashboard, <laughs> and it's kind of tucked down on my lap. Mm. Um, I find that the clamps, if they're um, not upward and down, up and down, north and south, mm -hmm. that they can catch on your thread a little mm, bit. Okay. So, so the other pointing thing, up and pointing this down. is one I learned from Janice, which I adore this technique. This is the actually I guess I learned it from you. Who must have you must have learned it from I Janice. I did. Yes. Was from, to put a spool of thread under there. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> right? It really <laughs> this helps makes, with it your tension. Changed my life. Yeah. You just need that little bit of room to work, mm -hmm. right? So I like this because it's the least amount of stuff that I can yeah. carry around. Yeah. Um, it's take nice. it on the plane. Right. There you are. It fits in most little carry-on cases. Right. It's pretty light. It's a nice way to go. If it got damaged, I'd say, oh, and I'd get a new one. Yeah. And I wouldn't worry about it too right. much. Right. Well, it's a great way. So that's of, that's my style. And we also have a, we have a really great trick for you guys. It's <laughs> the trick is at the end, so we've got to get to the end right. to show you, but. 
I think it's going to blow your mind. And it it blew my well. mind. <laughs> well, you were the inventor, so I'm but excited. It, it was just because I was here, and someone right. came and talked to me, and right. I, I was lamenting the fact that I was out of thread, and I was right. going to have to add thread. Right. But we'll, we'll get to that. But this holy end. Toledo. I yeah, know, yeah. It's a just good you one. wait. So, Brand, let's move that camera down one more time okay. now that we've kind of discussed connections. And any, um, any other questions about that, M, that you see? Hi, Sherry from Lakeport. Hi, Sherry from Lakeport. There she is, our <laughs> Sherry from Lakeport. So let's talk a little bit about the tools and materials uh, that we're doing here. So we've talked about the boards and how to attach to the boards. But for this week, for this particular um, uh, bracelet, and we're using, we're doing the same colorways that we did last week in beaded stacks. Um, and if you go to on the beadshop.com Facebook live page, all of the ingredients are listed there. But what we're using is we've used the little shadows and the little shadows reverse out that we use them in the center and on the outside. So we have the three golden hour sunset bronze morning mist. And um, for the golden hour, we're using the antique brass and this matte opaque antique beige seed bead which so pretty I love it so much it's a really really good one so we've got that um, then we've got the antique copper and we've got this matte transparent topaz um, and it's not the antique copper it's the um, is it antique it's the or is it the shiny copper I think it's a shiny copper is it well we've got antique oh, copper here let me and grab I'm holding you one. shiny right. copper in my hand you grab an but copper. they would Thank both you, work I thought it was shiny copper. You know what? And I think it's because we pulled out this shiny copper. Yep. Um, and so Emily's sample, yours is going to be in the mm -hmm. shiny. Yep. But it's let's leave them both out because okay. they're a good... You can use... This just goes to show you could use either the shiny or the antique. And it's the same thing here with the silver. We actually have the shiny silver here. But we uh, in the recipe, we've got the antique silver. So you might want to grab one oh, of those too. Oh, darn. Yep. Oh. Up. Well, and you know why we don't have those is because yes. we have to do a antiquing, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so we've got these guys. So you could use the shiny or the antique. doesn't really matter in the shadows, um, but these are the, um, the seed beads here. For the morning mist, we've got the um, matte transparent gray, which looks great. And what we've found when we're laddering that that little shadow and that 11 knot bead, it's a perfect size match. Okay, so, so that's why we chose the 11 knot. If you do want to pop things up to an 8 knot, then you might want to use your regular shadow um, in the middle um, for that size. Then we've also got some big shadows that we're going to use for the ends. Uh, we've got some size 10 beading needles. We've got some beeswax. You've got this hypo cement. And then for all three, we use the dark gray um, KO, but you could, you know, if you change the leather color, you can find a KO match that works for you. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at the ends, we use for all three, we use the 0.5 millimeter mm -hmm. um, Chinese knotting cord mm -hmm. in the milky latte. I love that milky latte. I do, too. And we thought it was a nice um, contrast here between that distressed gray and uh, the Chinese knotting cord. But again, you could add whatever it is you wanted. And here's the, the list again for the, all, all the bracelets there. Okay, so let's slide these guys on over what we've got here. And let me talk about, uh, real quick, this great skill builder that Janice oh. put together for us to use Janice today. has been working hard. She has been shows. working hard. She has been. And she um, really, I think, outdid herself with this skill builder. Um, but real quick, we might have some of these in our metal box. Do okay, let me check. That? Mm -hmm. And I'll go over the skill builder. Got a couple of quick questions. Uh-huh, sure. Uh, somebody wanted to know what the size of the seed beads was. Sure. It, they're knots. all 11 knots and on those seed beads. Could you use micro sealon instead of kale? Well, 
maybe. I don't know. We can grab a micro seal on while you're over there, Em. Why don't we yep. grab it? Okay. And let's take a look. Um, I chose KO. I'll bring it here so you guys can see it. Because it was pretty thin, and with the infinity stitch, I used this doubled. And it goes doubled in and out, and you'll see as we infinity stitch, this KO really works for these sizes of beads. The micro sealon, I don't know, it might be a little heavy, or if you're using beads that are a little bit larger, it would work for that infinity stitch. The other thing with the micro sealon, as we're stitching with infinity stitch, the way that I set up the thread, that thread is doubled. So we'll take a look. Um, we'll grab some, and I'll I'll talk to um, uh, I'll see if it works in the needle. Okay. So here is our new skill builder. I printed it out. I printed it out in black and white. So, but ye yours will be in color. But I wanted to save on ink. Um, but what we have here is a really great primer on how to start the infinity. And I am a big fan of working with the Infinity Stitch when I ladder. So if you've gone ahead and printed this guy out, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to set this aside for just a second, and I'm going to bring my board to the center. And Brian, do you have a pretty good view on my board here? I'm going to start right up here at this okay. side. Okay. So what I've done is I've cut, I'll turn it around, you can see I've used the single rubber band method here, and that rubber band is coming around, up around my little clamp, and we've measured about twice the length of my board, which is about 14 inches, plus about half the length. So we're doing um, 14, 14 is 28, and then 7 more is 34, right? Is that right? <laughs> I think so. Don't ask me to do math before lunch. Um, and then we've just put this around. That gives us plenty of room for our laddering as well as our um, macrame closure knot. Okay. So one of the things, when we start with a macrame, and if we look at this bracelet here, um, what we'll do is we start it, and it's kind of hard to see under this shadow, but I've started it with macrame, and then that little shadow, or well, this big shadow in this case, covers that macrame section, right? So, um, so it hides the beginning, but what lives under here is macrame. So I want to start, we've got a great skill builder on um, how to macrame, but it looks... Um, it's very easy to follow, but I just wanted to show you how, again, how I started it. And I want to have plenty of thread or cord left over, so I'm going to start my um, macrame, I don't know, maybe about five inches in, um, or give myself a tail of about five or six inches of this cord. So one of the tricks when you're macrame with KO for the beginning, and you can see I've cut a nice length of KO. It's doubled over through my size 10 beading needle. And I'm going to have my tail of my KO on the left, my left, and the needle on my right. And so this is because when I am macrameing, I don't want to macrame and try and get my needle through. I'm going to macrame with just these tails. So you'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to start with my little P, right? There's my P. And with the tails, I go under and up through the P. And I'm ready to go there, okay? Now on this side, I've got the P. I come up and under with the tails and up through the loop. And there's my second macrame stitch, right? Let me get a little bit of white paper underneath. Do you want a uh, piece of uh, macrame cord to do that with as well? Um, just for, or leather, just for demonstration purposes? Just for demonstration. So I'm there on that side. I come under and up 
and then on this side, my Q side, under and up. We do have a lot of those skill builders that shows you this, but yeah, and if you do have a larger cord, I'll just do it right here. Yeah, that way you guys can really, really see it. Because I know, again, this gray on gray, I'm going to keep going until I get that bigger cord. Okay. It's a dark background, too. actually makes the... Makes it go. The thread pop more. And you can see with just doing this with this tail, I, my needle side, the, end, the side with my needle on it, never moves. I've seen the, the close-up is working pretty well. Is it? Okay. Yeah. The needle just stays over there and I don't have to worry about pulling that crazy needle through. Okay. And I'll do this just real quick here. I'll pull it down a little bit more. Here's my first macrame stitch. There, if it's facing me, there's my P. I come under that double piece of leather and out through that loop. That gives me my first stitch. And I know this is right, because can you guys see? Here's that little scallop. So from that scallop, I take that um, cord, and to me, when I'm facing it, it's making the letter Q, right? So I bring this side up and over this cord, under the double cords, and out through that hole, okay? Now I'm gonna tighten it up. And you guys saw on my Free Tip Friday a couple of weeks ago when I was macrameing around memory wire. That's just how I was doing it. So here's that scallop side. So I know I make my little P facing me over the cord, under the doubled cord, and up and out through that loop. Okay? And you just macrame as long as you want this beginning to be. Any so other questions? I was yeah. sort of thinking it as maybe about as long as the the um, the uh, extra large shadow, the large shadow, the big mm -hmm. shadow. That, that was about as much distance here as right. you might want. As you might want, right. right. So this is the same length. Yeah, because it's going to slide over it. So Yeah, you want to as that it. big shadow, yeah. right. So that's about that same length. Mm -hmm. So let me, I'm going to get rid of this leather cording here and we'll keep going. I did grab a um Oh a micro sealon. Micro -sealon. Well let's take a look at it, shall yeah. we? You've got some needles on it. I do, down. I've got one. That. I've got a size ten right here. Okay. So we'll double check that. And so now what I can do I'm gonna come in with my uh, shadow, my big shadow later and pop this over. But for now, I am, where did our glue end up? We had our little jar of bowl of glue, our cup of, cup of glue. I'm going to go ahead and add myself a little bit of um, glue right on this end that has the tails on it. Just a little dot of that hypo cement, top and bottom then that will um, cure while I'm stringing and then I'll be able to cut that tail off later. I liked doing this because I could put my um, big shadow over that again mm -hmm. later. I didn't have to do it right now, no. but I did I did add the glue and then um, put Let the shadow sit. over yeah. it. Yeah. One of the things also um, for this, you could bring this leg down the side as you were doing infinity stitch so the leg kind of I don't know blends in along the side mm -hmm. and this KO mm -hmm. is so fine and small you could do that too yep. but I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and just leave this out for now yeah. and actually I want my needle you need to make a decision here on which side you want your needle to be on so I actually want my needle to match Janice's instructions so I'm gonna go ahead and tie one more um, one more knot so that my needle there we go I was a two, ends I up. was a two and a two thread um, not an infinity but a 
a regular, just a two, a two thread ladder. Right, two mm -hmm. thread ladder. But after I did this um, little bit, I now I might be a an infinity, infinity stitcher. Yeah. I know. I think they're great. I think it's great. So now with Janice's instructions, where did, where did those end up? Right. Okay. So with Janice, what she talks about, we've macrameed our thread into place. We've glued. I'm not going to cut the tail away quite yet. Now we're going to choose choose our add side. So that's pretty important, you guys, because with Infinity Stitch, you always add your thread on the same side. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to add my thread on the right side. And Janice also says, if you need to, put a post-it note on the side that you're going to add, oh, right? right? Right, right, So right. that you know, all right, this is it right, right here, until you run into that habit. Right. Okay? So, I also like mm -hmm. Janice made an interesting point, and this came in, into my brain as well, is that this laddering stitch with infinity is very similar to looming. It and is, it feels yeah. very much the same. Very much like looming. Yeah. Yeah, it's really true. So now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to take my needle... And for step one, we're going to put on one small first bead, right? And this, you guys, the setup for infinity, if you can set this up correctly, everything else is going to be just perfect, all right? So I'm going to slide this bead on my needle, and I'm going to take my needle underneath the leather and see how I'm going to push this up so that bead is bright, snugs in place. Now I'm going to kind of push that needle or that bead up kind of tight. There's a little bit of air there, but now I'm going to come back through. I sometimes I have to poke that little needle up with my finger or the bead up with my finger. That's when you want to be careful not to nick this That's leather right, right here, right? right? This is a danger zone right here. Danger zone, danger, danger, danger. So you want to make sure that this, I've got a little bit of a goof here, but you want to make sure that this is nice and even. So now let's, let me get that, look at that, that little um, Would beeswax help uh, control some of the... We did actually wax the thread, so okay. thanks for pointing mm -hmm. that out, Brand. We actually have done that. So now what we're going to do for that infinity, we take the needle under that leg, right? Because infinity, what we're making, you guys, is a little figure eight, right? What do you need? Don't forget your charts. Oh, I'll show the charts in just a second. Okay. okay. That little figure eight. Okay. So now I'm going to go underneath through here. And once I'm here, I need to reinforce just this first one. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do the exact same thing through the needle or through the bead hole under. the left side, my left, not yours. Make sure that bead is nice and in place. Through that bead hole, back through, holding everything in, and then I need to go under. Oops. You want to make sure that you don't have too much of a tangle here. And like any setup, row in any beadwork, that first row is always the one that gives you the most trouble. And what I do here at this point, I pull on both of these to make sure that I don't have a little, what I call a little bubble of thread on the side. Then I'm going to pass my needle underneath, and now I'm ready for my second row. Now, Janice made these handy-dandy little charts, and I've posted them. We'll post them in the episode notes, 
I've already posted them up in the Facebook group, but we can also post this on our regular page as well. And you can see, I guess I'll do it this way, so it's in the same order as I'm doing. You can use these to kind of help you plan out what you're doing, but essentially what I did was I had this here, there's my macrame, my tail is on this side, and here is my needle end, right? And so when I go through, I start by going under, I go through my bead, under that leather, then over the leather, the, over the leather, easier said than done, under, and then over again, and then I do that two times, okay, to really get that bead positioned correctly. And then, depending on how many beads you want to go up to, we would do two beads here, so I would come through, I'll just draw that again, we go over, we actually go, this is going under, sorry, under, then over and through, then under and over, and we go through these beads, under the leather, back over, under this side, and then we pop down to that bead hole. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going through, you can see, and I'll turn this towards you guys, we're doing that figure eight. That's the infinity that we're doing. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Janice, is that pretty clear? I'm going to shout out to JP and see if she has anything to add on this. A little conversation going about stringing several at once. Oh, pre-stringing beads. I've never, I I've don't never know, done it. I've never done it like that before. And I do pre-string my beads for other things. Um, so here's my second row. Jenna says yes. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you, JP. Thanks for these charts. So see here with the second row? Here I come. I'm laying, I've got my beads on. I'm going under that side and I get my finger in so I have lined those up. Now I'm going to go back through, see under then over that leather, back through those two beads. If they get out of place that's okay. Just get your needle through, pull everything in, and then I want you guys to anticipate what we're going to do next. If I've gone through the beads, where does my needle need to go? Under this leg of leather. Leg of leather. Okay? So we're all set and in place. And one of the things that I always check, if here are my cords, well let me do it on here, okay? If here are my cords, I always, you can see that when your threads are coming through, and if they're coming through correctly, they kind of all, I'm making it a little more exaggerated than it is, but your threads should look really equal on both sides. If, if something's a little funny or your thread is pointing down the other way or something like this, that, you know, is a no-no, okay? Your flattering, your infinity, if you're doing it correctly, all of your threads should be in the same um, plane, right? Mm hmm Okay. So now I'm ready to add now my third row, and that's the shadow row, okay? So let me get everything. Good thread management and thread control is... And feel free to beeswax again yeah, as needed. Yeah, as needed, right? So I'm going to get one of my beads here. I'm going to get one of my shadows. In this case, I'm using the shiny shadow, but you could use the shiny or the antique. Whatever works for you. And I go pull my beads down so they're in place. Then I go with my needle under the left side and I pop my beads in 
tell those beads who's boss. Who's the boss of those beads, Emily Miller? That came up earlier. <laughs> right? Who's the boss? I am. I am. Well, right, you are. Right? You and me. I'm so the boss. And Janice. And you guys. We're right. the boss of these beads. Right. So now it becomes a little more difficult to get your needle through, but just scrape the top of those seed beads with your needle. And if they want to come up, let them. It's okay. Just get your needle. I just pinch in between my index finger and my thumb on my left hand. Then I just, I coerce them into place. I say, hey, you guys, you're going to be the prettiest ladder bracelet I've ever seen. Then it really helps to get that needle under and do that final tug. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm ready for my next row. So questions, how are we doing, Em? We're doing good. Somebody would like to know about how many sh uh, the, the shadow beads this project takes. I'd oh, say it's, it's a great question. Maybe a, in the neighborhood of a half a strand. A half total. a third to a half, yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I'd say. So let's put on, I'm going to put on my next row. And I am going to put my needle under... Get my finger, push those into place. Round the corner, round my infinity symbol. Go through with my needle. And once you have everything established, it's a little bit easier. You're not playing around with so much. There I go, went under that leg. And once you go under, then I just come in and I make sure that everything is cinched. See how, also with these shadows, see how the shadows um, are like a hexagon, right? They have a little cut to them. If I push my finger up and underneath them and I can pinch them this way, I can really make sure that all of the shadows are facing the same way, mm -hmm. right? It's a good tip. So, and the wax on my thread, now things are kind of calming down a little bit, right? We can all breathe. Let's take a collective breath, everybody out there. It's okay. Well, it, and most of the time in, in any kind of beading stuff where you're having to follow a pattern or establish a pattern, right? those first couple of rows look really hinky, and they give you the struggles. Um, wait till we get to bead crochet, and we're all going to have this conversation multiple times. Right. But sometimes it's just good to keep going. You know, at worst, you're out some thread and some time. Right. The beads, you can always recover. You can always take it apart and, and make something else. Make something it. else. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really okay. It's really okay. So over, under the left leg. So now you'll have your mantra. Under the left leg. Beads on first. Under the left leg. Back up and over through your beads. Slide your thread through, neaten it up. Look at you! Did you guys get those little ghost knots? There we go. And pop that needle or your thread under the right leg, and cinch it tight. That's all there is to it. I'll add one more row. Um, it's just gonna be almost time. That one I'm gonna reject. I don't like that one. It's almost time to show them you're adding a thread trick. Oh. Which, you guys, oh my god, oh my god, you guys, you, I can't get the shadow on my needle. Um, you're going to love this one, but let me turn the corner one she more time. She would like to know what a shadow bead is. I, oh, just, I just answered yeah. her, and then Janice linked it, so I yeah. said, you know, Jean, really, it's a, it's a cube. It's a metal cube bead. It has a large hole. Mm -hmm, like a cut cube. And then it, the corners are cut off. Mm -hmm. And so if I pull out, let me uh, reach over here and grab this guy mm -hmm. and show you a big one. Um, you'll we get the idea. We just love these. For yeah. I and you guys know. Who so there's watching, a shadow. You've been watching us for a while. In you know that this Kate's is my neck favorite bead. There. Um, and it's it's a really useful shape. It does a lot of different things. Um, I'm still not getting it in your the, field of view here. The metals are real nice. Let's go over here. Over there. Yeah, maybe that'll do. And you can see, you guys, when you're doing the cinching, the cinching is easiest after yeah. you've gone under. Right. Yes. It gives you, you get that last little tug. You know, I, I a lot of times in seed beating, um, tension is, is important. Tension is everything. And you what you want to do is be consistent with whatever you're right. doing. Right, right. I often find that there's a, there's a point in every different, and each stitch is a little bit different. There's mm -hmm. a point where I can 
feel everything is as firm as possible and mm -hmm. I can make that last little tug. And I try and do the same kind of tug each time. Right, the same degree of tug. Right, and yeah. so whatever your particular feel for it is, is that's what you should do. Yeah. So I go through, then we'll go under, and we'll give it this one final tug. Um, sorry, Susan, no typewriter in the background. That's just the rattling of beads being spit. That's right. <laughs> For orders. That's right. <laughs> yes, stuff is going. We're doing this. For those of you who are fairly new to us, we broadcast right from our office, right in the Live. middle of everything. While so everything's still going on. We have our, uh, everyone's pulling orders, and Ivan is working the tape machine, and uh, Brandwin's taking photos, and so you hear everything, um, everything that we've got going on. So, yeah. Wanted to show you that, that little shadow, so it was right kind there. of good, good yep. spot. So, Em, let's show them how okay. you uh, what I close what that I off. discovered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> this often happens to me when I'm I'm learning something new, and for me, learning this laddering was sort of new. I had done it before, um, but it was it was new to me in the sense of having doing a piece that sort of had a beginning, a middle, and an end, mm -hmm. and, and I was doing it for someone else. So this is my piece, and this is upside down. I'll turn it around right side up so everybody looks at it correctly, the way you have been looking at it. And my, I'm going to pretend here that I've run out of thread, and I'm mm -hmm. midway through my piece. Right. So I often get seed bead folks who say, when's the perfect moment to add thread? When should I add some thread? And really, the answer is when you have to kind of lean over to get the beads on your right, needle. Right, right. <laughs> That's about the That's right about time. That's about the time. Mm -hmm. um, you need to add some thread to uh, finish off your piece. And I was working away on um, these pieces and, and these samples and thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to run out of thread. What am I going to do? So I knew I had to add thread. And the first thing I did was went ahead and finished off the thread I was working on. So I stitched th through the beads. Just like we would finish off any seed bead project, right? right? Around the leather once to get up to the next row and through a few beads. And if I had more width here, I could do this more cleanly. Width. width. But I'm just going to actually kind of go back a row or two and then come back down. And Janice shows this very nice and clearly in the skill builder, um, how she's hiding her ends of her thread. Um, but to start a new thread, I don't really have a lot of width here to, to work with, so these beads actually might get fairly full of thread. So while I was working with this piece, and someone... And this is particular to this single strand. Absolutely. Right, yeah. so we wouldn't do this on a bigger wrap. No, I wouldn't but find it necessary right. usually. But if you're doing yeah. this... This is perfect for this single strand. So while this was happening last week, someone walked out into the area where I was working, and I had turned the board around to finish adding, finishing off my first thread, and I had not yet added new thread. And I realized that since I was only going to make a bracelet length, so about six inches or six and a quarter inches mm -hmm. here, I could actually start at the other end and work my way to here. So I grabbed the measuring tape, mm -hmm. and I pulled out the length of measuring tape mm -hmm. so that I could look at how much I was missing. Pardon so I reach. think I made these about six and a quarter inches long. So what I knew then was that I had to start about here and work my way back down. So I simply started a new thread, just like you would end the thread. So I began a new thread at the ending, and worked my way to the middle. Right, so it, it's just like you were starting the bracelet again. Yeah, all over again. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, it it there was a major light bulb for me. A major light bulb <laughs> moment. So here's one that we yeah. um, that we're completing. This about length, six and a half. yeah, it's about six and a half yeah, inches. So you are yeah about there. So right. if we place these side by side, right, this one right next to your other one, yep. you can see, yep. I need so, to start off again about yeah, right there. Yeah, Emily's going to start right there. Right? So how would you tie that on then? I would start exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. I would macrame myself a little starter. Right, your starter. And I would just continue to work down until I ran into the middle. And then I would 
work back and forth a couple times to join it up in the middle. Yeah, questions about the joining. And, and does it look, is it noticeable, and how do you no, join it up? I, no, all I did was just went in there and went back and forth a couple of times, and it was all good. Where's that other bracelet? Show me again. And is it? No. Oh, no, it must have been. I think it was on this one. So somewhere in the middle. In the vast middle. In the vast middle here. Can you see a join? No. Anybody? I'm Anybody? Zooming in nice and close. Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? Nope. No join there. No join. No join, but there is one. But for me, this was kind of a light bulb moment to turn it around and treat this piece like I was working from both ends to the middle made a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, I really, I even worked it so that my thread and as you turn you know on your edges your thread looks a little different on one side than the other mm -hmm. and so I m flipped over the piece so that I actually had everything working exactly super the smart. same yeah and super smart and it was just it like I said it was just truly just a light bulb moment for me um, I really love that it, that um, that way you did it because it really is like a seamless right join you know you don't have to play around too much. Because adding thread, you know what everybody always says, no one likes to add thread. Well, and that's, you know, it, it's at the beginning of your learning and skills gathering, you set yourself up with a giant long piece of thread. And that giant long piece of thread then... It's giving you fits. It's like giving it is you so, fits. Like it's giving me fits because right now. Because you have knots and everything everywhere, and it makes yeah. you crazy. And yeah. you think to yourself... What? How can I fix this? I must be doing it wrong. Right. And you get frustrated and you go away. Right. So working with a manageable piece of thread. And so Makes I think so a manageable easier. piece of thread is about a yard to a yard and a half. Now, if we're using double thread, we double that. So right. we've got about three yards of thread that we're working with. Right. We've put it through the needle, brought the ends together. That doubles the, the amount, the thickness of the thread. Mm -hmm. And while you're working with that thread, it's easy for it to create little extra bubbles. Um, so you have to wax it and keep your tension good so that the thread stays even mm -hmm. and, and crisp all the time. And that can give you fits. So if you work with, if you're working with a very long piece of thread, you spend your time untangling it a bunch of times. Yeah. So working with a manageable piece of thread, it's okay to add thread. You just have to figure out how you're going to do it and, and not when have and it where, yeah. and be hidden. And part of the trick was to flip it. Right. Yes. Yeah. I flipped the entire piece over. Well, at first I flipped it end for end, so north for south. And then when I started the laddering again, I just made it... Flipped your ladder. I flipped my ladder so that my okay. stitching looked exactly the same. There's no mm -hmm. difference anywhere to show that there was anything different kind of going on. And you use any glue... For any of I used no glue. Yeah. No glue. Right? Just weaving. Just weaving. I did want to show this, um, M, because I, sure. while you were explaining too long of thread, I was getting myself out of a bind. <laughs> what, what, a, what a surprise. <laughs> One of the things that I find it really easy to do when you are doing this infinity stitch with a needle is... Sometimes it's easy to split these threads and, you know, things go haywire here at the end. So what happened was I had come in and I probably, as I was going under my thread here, and if you can see, if I can open this up, you can see that this is a doubled thread, right? And so as I go under my needle split those threads, okay? And then I finished the stitch, and then I kept going. But it was really hard for me, the, the thing that I should have been paying attention to, after I pulled it underneath, it was really hard for me to pull it tight, and I thought, well, I'm rushing, it's demo time, you know, I'm probably just not doing that stitch right. Then I put another row in, and I could see that my thread was starting to kind of bubble up here. So what I did was, to take it back out, I just kind of used my awl, and you can just kind of open up the KO loop on this side. Once you have that loop open, 
So this would be exactly what I would do with, with looming as well. Mm -hmm. If right. I had exactly a bad the row same. and looming, exactly. exactly the same. I'd make sure that everything was pretty loose. And then as I'm taking this out, see how I'm backing the needle, backing it out of the driveway instead of turning it around and trying to split. Eye first. Right. Eye first, not the point first. Correct. And so see then, I can just take it right out. You get to be selfish and eye I, first. That's right. And then, I, then I'm good to go. Okay. Have you ever tried, can I show you something, a try? Sure. To take your two leathers, in, one in each hand, uh -huh. and just pull them apart. Uh-huh. See how that opens up the loops? Oh, great idea. Because I'll do that with looming Smart. too. Smart. I'll take those edge warps and kind of pull them open. I have never so known that So it kind of makes that little loop happen right there. Look at right that. There. This, boom, instant... Um, Loosening. Loop. Yeah. So you can get in there easily. Smarty pants. Smarty pants. So I think Sharon, I think the thing that Sharon is confused about is that the angle is different. That's because you flip it both directions. You flip it this way and you flip it over. Correct. So I'm not, I'm not using the term That's correctly. all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. So Sharon, <coughs> initially I flipped the my board end for end. So what was in my lap becomes on top and what was on top be is in my lap. Then I went ahead and macrame started my thread again. And then what I did was I looked at the how my stitches were going last time. And what I did was I flipped my work. So, so that like this, so my, over here, mm -hmm. you just flipped it this way. Correct, one. so that my new thread and new needle mm -hmm. were picking up the same path pattern as before. Mm -hmm. Because in weaving, and if any of you do regular types of weaving, the selvage edge that you're making, one of your selvage edges always looks neater than the other. Right. And it's just how weaving is. Well, and I think it might be related to our handedness. Yeah. You know, where like the right handed or left handed. It, yeah. And so see how I'm trying to pull this tight, but I still have a little bit of space there? It's because I didn't go under. And so go under. Tammy says she doesn't have needles. Can she harden the end of the thread somehow to make it work? You know, I'm going to say, Tammy, that if you're using KO doubled like this, you got to have needles. I think. I, I think you'll... I don't think there's any, yeah, any way any around way it. Yeah, any way around it. No. No. If you're laddering and you're doing two ladders, if you, you can find more uh, of our laddering projects under Tricks to Laddering, our Tricks to Laddering projects, and we do this with two pieces of of um, Ceylon or tough cord, but you ladder from both ends this way. That way, you don't particularly need a needle. But for infinity stitch, you you gotta you gotta have a needle because the whole part of infinity stitch is is that we're doing a doubled over thread, mm -hmm. and so it would be really difficult if I had two just pieces of thread here trying to shove everything back through these beads. So I would say. Invest in so some good seeds. Terry Lynch needles. has an interesting question. Sure. And she said, is it possible to make these bracelets on a loom? You know, we've had that question before with laddering. And uh, maybe, I mean, it depends, I think, maybe on the kind of loom that you have. The main thing, I think, is with a loom, there's no real way... This would be like a continuous warp, right? Or a continuous, yeah, a mm -hmm. continuous warp. So, um, I don't know. I'd have to play around with that. You know, I'd have to try it. The In this case, the tray that we're using um, sort of works like a loom. Yeah. In that it holds the holds warps, the warp taut. thread yeah. taut, and it gives us that um, sort of hands-free availability. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it might be asking a lot of your loom to do both and to tension it enough for and you. It, right, because this tension, it's pretty important. Hmm. Um, so we need to show how to close this off, Em. I yeah. could I could infinity stitch this all day, but let okay. me put this last infinity in here, okay. and then I want to show you guys one more little, uh, little trick. And I think, um, of course, I always say it's one more. Oh. I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to rush here. So I've got this, I've come through, I go under. 
we just got a delivery. What did we get? I don't know. I just what did we get, some. Ed? It's a little box. Oh, a fun little, who knows what's mm. in there, right? As we say, life in the office goes goes on. Right. The postman had go. to stop in for a That's signature. Right. So let's say that I was just going to end this here just like this, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things, and we'll go over this, we've got um, another ladder bracelet project coming up, not next week because Janice is back, but the following week, and we'll go over this again. But let's say that we were going to now macrame this closed, right? Obviously, our bracelet would be a lot longer, but let's say that we're going to macrame this closed, okay? If I macrame, if I cut my needle off now and macrame, um, I'm going to use one of the lengths of thread on one side and one length on the other. And this macrame on this side would be a little skinnier than the one I started with, right? Because we don't, um, we're doing our macrame with split, split threads, right? What Janice came up with, which was super smart, was she cut another length of KO, which I'm going to do here. This was also a... a this was an aha moment, right? Yeah, sure. For sure. Here's this. I'll wax it just for fun. Now what we'll do... Again, we're going to pretend that this... is done. Well, I don't even have to cut these threads off, I guess. I can just add this on. I'm going to add my other KO. Now I'm just going to start with my macrame. I, this is my doubled strand. My old doubled strands on this side. My new KO is on this side. And I come in, I slide it up, and I pinch it all down. So here's my doubled strand that I've just added, and here's the strand. It actually still has the needle on it, right? And then I'll just keep going, making my little macrame stitches all along, right? And then I'll close it up. Let me see if I can... Yeah, it's nice and tight on there. So, again, just to start, I'd get my long length. I'd put it around my cord so it's acting as one. I bring my other cord to it, and I just jump in and start. But you've got your two sides here. I think it's a really, really great... Um, just ingenious tip, JP, yes, on how to do I it. Yes, I agree. And look at this. Now, you could, on you something know, like this, this is looking pretty nice. I could come in and just put a... I kind of like how that looks. I like do, as too. A little as a little jemmy kind of thing. Tennis bracelet Right. Feel, and right? then I could just macrame a little bit more. And my needle's still going on here. So I could keep going with another section, especially if I macrame uh, a, a few more knots here. So it looks like Which we I'll did do. have some positive feedback on using a loom for um, doing holding the leather. Okay. And so I asked that I asked uh, Lynn to par post something on um, the Facebook page. Okay. There we go. Great. So see that it's coming together really nicely. Now I could put some glue here, and I could start another section. What I didn't do here is I didn't taper down because we don't have time. This is demo time and not real jewelry time. So I would have tapered down at the beginning just like I did at the end. Okay, but this is my demo piece, so we're we're trying to get it all in here. Now let me show you how to close. Okay, so let's pull that, push that aside. And I know we have that open piece here somewhere, Emily Miller. Where did that bracelet go? I need it. It's yours. So now, what we've done, what I've done here is, once the bracelet, I take it off the, the board, and I have some long pieces here, right, that are hanging off. The long pieces, what I do, if this is my piece here, and these are my ends, 
and I would have macrameed here and I would have put on my, my shadow bead. I want a length that's left, let me measure this so you get an exact measurement. I want a length that's left that's, I don't know, that's about two and a half inches from the end here that where the shadow bead is to the tips of this cord. So I would just come in, I'd measure about where my shadow would be. I'll put a clip there. So we know that would be where the end of the bracelet is. And then I'd just come in at the end and tie a loop, an overhand knot, pass the length of that cord through, tighten it down, check my length. Yep, that's good. Then I'd come in, I might give it, sometimes my hands don't want to pull as well as they used to, so I'll just get my chain nose pliers. I'll hold it out a little ways, so it just helps me give that knot a little extra tug, and then I'll clip those ends. Okay, so that's how that end is, and I would do that on both sides. So what I end up with looks like this. So now I'm going to, we're going to macrame again using our 0.5 millimeter Chinese knotting cord. Now I'm going to bring these two strands together. And this is where clamps come back to play. My clamps <laughs> come back to play. Let me see if I can get them in order nicely here. I clamp them, and I know I have a second one. Is there a second one that I can have? I suppose. I'm going to steal that one. And as I bring all my leather together under these clamps, I want to make sure that the leather is even. This one needs a little adjusting, so let me adjust it. But see here what I've got? I've clamped everything closed. And see how this connection, everything is even. There's not one strand that's a little so they're not looser twisted than the other. Yeah, twisted. Like they're mm -hmm. nice, nice little lines. Now this little opening gives me a little place to macrame, and my clamps also help. Let me skew this slightly so you guys can see. It also helps me kind of hold my bracelet in place. Look at that. They act as little little feet there, especially if I put that one down, so they're both on the floor. Look at that. I like those little clamps. I do too. I Look tell at you, how, neat, super cute. how neat and tidy this is. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to get myself a piece of Chinese knotting cord, and I'm going to say that I want about, I don't know, 12 inches, maybe a little bit longer. And can you use four, four, eight, or is you could. I went the middle of the road and I used five, uh, 0.5 millimeter, um, but I don't see why not. I think the 8, I think I actually tried the 8. It felt a little big for me for this scale, but if you're making it larger, you might want to go for that. And I'm going to start the macrame, the length of macrame that I need is going to be, I don't know, maybe about a half an inch. Let me measure this. About a half an inch, maybe just slightly longer, but that, that works out. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start my macrame. I'll start it with my doing my P side over the cord, under, and now in this case it's four cords, and back up through that circle and tighten. Let me get everything nice and flat. It's a little hard to show you guys because everything wants to twist, but there we go. And once you get that first knot set up, there it is, then you can come in and do your second knot. So there's my 
not there, and here's my P side, my P. My second end, I come over, under the four cords, and back through that loop. Once you have your knot established, and see, look at these little clamps, they even hold, they hold everything up even this way. That's pretty, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to macrame, 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 nice and snug, all the way down. Okay, like so. Then, like this. Now, Emily, you, we were talking a little bit about closing off this mm -hmm. fishtail, right? Mm -hmm. So, would you... Do you want my comment? You want my I comments do. on I it? I do. <laughs> I do. So, when I have done macrame, I, and, and this egg, well, let me step, take a little step back. <clears throat> Generally, my rule of thumb for finishing something off is to try to make it look as neat tidy and as durable and secure as I can. Mm -hmm. All the, I want to hit all those bases. All those bases, yeah. So with macrame, one thing that I have found that I rather like to do is to do my last couple of knots and leave them a little loose and then feed my macrame cord up through mm -hmm. the beads, or my macrame cord back up through those knots. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and do that, Yeah. okay? I thought this was a really clever way of doing it. And then I'll show you how I did the other one. Right. So that's kind of loose, right? And it's kind of weird to do it so loose. Right. And if I may say, I love the clamps, and I usually would clamp this to my board so that it wasn't right, so right. skittery, scattery everywhere. Sorry, Gita. But you can see, now that's how Emily's neatening her knots. Right. See that? Kind of getting them in good order. Mm -hmm. And then... Do you what want I a needle? Nope. So see this loop coming around? I'm going to make sure that my thread goes around that loop. So I don't want to go back in here. I want to come from the bottom You're up. You're under the little bars. Mm -hmm. Look at that all. So handy. There we go. Put that guy through there. Right. Right. Neaten everything back and I know up. that it feels like this is all kind of loosey-goosey, but ultimately everything kind of gets tightened back up again, and then things are happy. And we're going to do that same thing with that other mm -hmm. leg, right? You're going to pass it up. Yep. And I got a big old loop of thread here I want to try and manage. Yeah. Here he is. <laughs> they always say to be a good knotter, you need to also know how to untie a knot. Agreed. As well as not. Agreed. Knotting. I'm just I looking think it's that here. One. No. It is this guy. There it is. Yeah. The anatomy of your knot. So see that? How that little leg just went underneath. Now Emily's going to do the same thing with yep. that one. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And one thing I have found, you know, if you I've seen you done do the glue several times. Um, is you could glue the ends of this uh, Chinese knotting cord with a little bit of your um, gel we glue zap. It? We could glue it at this no, point? No, 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 no. Okay. So I'm going to grab these guys by the edges, pull, and pull again. Just pulling so those knots. you're kind of working that little knot mm -hmm. that Working it back to closed. Okay. Let's see where that guy goes. It goes over there. I think. I thought. I no, thought I guess so this too. guy. Yeah. It must be that guy. This guy, that guy. Hmm. There it goes. But I think it's a good way, and you can kind of leave like the last. I don't know, couple of of knots okay. kind of open so that when you are um, mm. wor working this knot back through and while you're getting giving that me a guy, fit. you get a little closer to where yeah, you are. That's what I'm um, you can see here on this one, I've just done the macrame, 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 macrame on both sides. Then what I ended up doing here is I used the hypo cement and this has been really sitting um, and curing. 
What you could also do, and then I could just come in and clip this off and we're good to go. Some of you have a thread burner, you like to thread burn mm -hmm. this down. What you could also do on this side is, and what I did in some of the samples was, I put this tiny, this little shadow on, and I had the little shadow here, and then I just knotted, uh, knotted my, my cord so I've got little tails here. We could do that. Jackie says she slides her sew sewing loop turners. Yeah, you can use a you could use a twisted wire needle here to do this. Yeah. You could use um, another scrap of, of uh, thread right. that you've macramed over. Mm -hmm. And then I just throw a little bit of glue on there. And Kate and I have one thing that we totally agree on. One thing. Just one? Just one. I think it's, well, no, I think there's a lot that we agree yeah. on, but we both agree that when you have glue that's wet, you want to let it dry a let while. Let it sit. I and like to let mine dry I'm overnight. I'm kind of an overnight person, yeah, too. So I, am. I like a, a dry glue, and then I'll go in and trim it. Mm -hmm. And then I can do a nice, nice trimming job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or a thread here burner, either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there. And that's really all she wrote. I'll come in, I'll cut these nice and close because this has been sitting. So I'll cut it there with my Zuron, my trusty Zurons, you guys, my trusty Zuron. And then I can always come back in and give that another little bit of glue if I feel like I want to. And I always want to. And I want to keep the glue off of my leather because I don't want to glue right, your this to knot the le You're just trying to, to glue the leather. The yeah, we're just trying to glue the cord. So... There we go, just like that, okay? And then this, at first, when you um, play around with this, it's a little tight, but it loosens up pretty quick. There we go. See that? Just like so. Tammy wants to know if she can use Zap instead of Hypo. She's trying to use what she has, but she must make... Oh, <laughs> Tammy. You know, I actually prefer for this, I'll be honest, I prefer the Hypo Cement because the Hypo is more flexible. Mm -hmm. The Zap will really... It's a cr crispy. Well, it's a little crispy. It will harden this maybe beyond what you want it to be. So, Tam, work on this today and uh, you're going to want to place an order anyway and we'll get that order up pretty quick. <laughs> we'll get that... <laughs> Hypo cement out to you. Um, but I think that that's the glue that we want uh, for these. But I really hope that you enjoy this technique. I think it's a really great one. It would be great to take along to your family gatherings. You know, you could set up the boards for everybody and you could just have people ladder and help them close things off. It would be a fun group project, um, especially um, matched with, I don't know where. Where's our, where are our, um, from last week? Oh, they're right in front of me. <laughs> so you can see how great, how great this little family, um, this family sits together. Okay. So, Brand, I think we can move that camera back and we'll start our sign off, though. It's just sad to sign off on our Facebook Wednesdays. We miss you when we're not together. There we are. All oh, crooked Perfect. and... Crooked, all crooked. We're all getting there. All crookedy. There we go. Crooks. Should I move my head around? There Trying we go. to prevent... Perfect. Your paperwork's over there. There it is. There it is. So, you guys, just as a reminder, uh, you can find all of the info, the Facebook Live page, for this uh, laddered stack bracelet on our website, beadshop.com. Go right to the Facebook Live page. You'll see the project there. You can click on it. It's got all um, the details. It's got all the details, the, the beads we used, mm -hmm. everything there. Um, and also, keep an eye out on Monday. Today's a Wednesday. So the following Monday, um, we'll have the episode notes up for these. But Jana sent her amazing her notes. Her amazing notes. But you already have almost everything that you need in this great 
a skill builder yes. that's already linked on the Facebook Live page. We'll go ahead and link these charts, all of this stuff, so you've got all of the info that you need there. And so any final questions? Any, any final things that we've got going on? Um, I can see that uh, Janice and I are going to have to do some work this week. Very good. Um, What's that? Oh, she wants me to do the uh, macrame knot and fix, do that oh, for her a oh. little more clearly. And I'm going to have to do a, um, a special little thing to do the two meetup ends so everybody can see it. Oh, yeah, that live, two meetup Or live. not live, yeah. but you know. It's such a good, yeah. um, it's such a good Oh tip. my gosh, it was, it, it made my light go on. Yes. Um, oh, one more thing. Look at this. What's that? Oh, we did want to mention yeah. about doing the... Fine through the uh, size 10 needle. Right. It's a tight fit, and you do have to ease it through, but if you prefer to ladder with uh, fine Ceylon... Uh, this is mi micro, isn't it? Micro. Micro Ceylon. Yeah. yeah, the micro Ceylon. Oh gosh, the names kill me. Right. Micro Ceylon. You can get it into a 10 needle. It yeah. took a little bit of doing, and you could maybe wax the end a little bit to get the fibers mm -hmm. together, and then I had to guide it through the needle. Yeah. So... Um, it did work, but again, this is going to be quite thick, and I, I mean, we can test it with a size 11, just yeah, a generic one. Yeah, I don't think one. that these would go back and But I don't know, I don't think it's going to, I don't know if it's going to go through twice. No. So that's kind of the rub there. So there's that, and let's try and go through. Or not easily. Yeah. So knowing this, um, if you're going to ladder this way, and, and yeah. you could do it, yeah. but it's going to be, one of the things that's going to give you fits is that you may stitch through your thread. Yeah. So cut, splitting the thread with the needle means you have lost all ability to tension. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's, that's right. That's really, yeah. a, to me, that's a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to be so, so careful not to split your thread mm -hmm. that you might might have a fit. Yeah, okay. but try, try it out and see what works for you. Yep. But this does uh, sit on this size 11, and the holes in the seed beads may vary, but this one in particular works out And the out Japanese beads tend to have a yeah, pretty good a hole. Bigger hole, yeah. 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 So as we sign off, um, we have um, a couple of things for you. Uh, if you place your order today, we always like a giveaway at the end mm. of our... And you picked out our, a really sweet I giveaway. I did. So, you know, when I was at Bead Fest the other day, uh, a few weeks ago, I was doing some shopping, and I found these darling little buttons... And I thought that they would go really well if you decided not to make this piece adjustable. Mm -hmm. But you could also use these, kind of like we were doing with all of our regular stacks mm -hmm. like this, right? Our, our wrap bracelets, um, our ladder bracelets, uh, to have a little, a little button on the end. So I found these two. One is a brass with a little lotus flower, and one is hammered copper. I love that hammered copper. And so if you place your order today at beadshop.com, today is 11.15. Oh, gosh, we're careening. To, we are exactly in the middle of November right now. Um, so six weeks to Christmas. That's right. Or five weeks to Christmas. Right. If you place your order uh, at 10, uh, before 1 p.m. today, a little bit, it's about 12.15 now, mm -hmm. so at about 1.15, and if you write button up in your shipping notes, um, we will add your two little buttons as your gift. Now, mm -hmm. these we don't carry on the website. Yep. They are something. So the only people who get them are you guys. Yeah, are you guys. So I found them um, on uh, when I was on my trip. So I think you guys will really dig those. And then uh, we are having um, 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 more you buy, the more you save sale that's on our more, stacks. Um, more on our um, website. Mm -hmm. But we thought we would remove the minimum for the 20% today. So if you um, are making a purchase and you add ladder 20 we will knock 20% off of your order with no minimum purchase required to get oh, that nice. discount. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So next week, oh my gosh, you know JP's going to be, be in the house. Yeah, Janice is going to be back. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Next week she has a really special necklace that she's designed uh, just to debut on Facebook Live. That is actually going to be up a little bit sooner. So keep your eye out for your newsletter 
because you're going to see what... Uh, I want to make one of those real It's bad. really nice. We're going to have um, the project up. We'll have some brand new beads that are up. So that stuff is coming up this weekend. So you guys will look for that. And then on Friday, for Free Tip Friday, we have a very, 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 I can't say it enough, very, very special guest. Drea is going to be on our coast. Yay. So she's coming out for a visit. So she will be on Free Tip Friday with me. And she has a perfect project ready for the holidays and I think you guys are really going to dig it so I'm going to be on free tip Friday with Drea this Friday so that's what we've got sounds good yeah. I mean man this next week is again careering towards the end yep you're right boy, oh boy. right getting getting ready for the holidays so you guys we really really appreciate your views your comments we do read them mm -hmm. we know that some of you can't watch this live and you watch it later on and give us those comments so we really really appreciate it we appreciate the shares out there um, and all of your feedback it's really great and we love seeing all your stuff on the Facebook we live, do Facebook group. Facebook group so if you have joined the Facebook group but I haven't approved you it means you haven't answered those questions so go back answer those questions and I'll click approve so we can all play around that bead table it's really really awesome mm -hmm. what's shaken all right M that's it for me. It's a wrap. Brand, it's a wrap. Cheers. We did it. Right. Cheers. We'll see you guys on Happy Friday days. for Free Tip Friday. And Janice, we'll see you at this bead table next Wednesday. Yay. Thanks, see you, you guys. Bye. See you soon.